Hey, I am Julia from Map Creator, and today I would like to introduce you to Map Creator's newest mapping tool, Map Creator Next. When you open the tool, you will land in the new dashboard. Here you can find your personal projects, your team maps, and also create custom folders. Projects can also be stored to make them stand out, and on the top right, you can decide how you want these to be sorted, whether you want last viewed, alphabetical, or maybe the start maps first. There's also a search function in case you want to find a specific project. And now we are ready to go directly into the tool and create our map. When you're in the tool, you can see the home icon on the top left. Here you can navigate back to your dashboard, change your preferences, see what's new, or go to the previous version of Map Creator. Right next to this is the undo or redo button where you can fix a little mistake or compare a before or after if you've made some changes. Right next to that is the settings wheel. Here you can select your preset for size or put a custom canvas size. You can change your map style, your detail level and your language and the toggle for globe view and 3D terrain are here. You can still change your canvas size by dragging the corners, but it is nice to know that there's a place where you can put a custom value in case you're looking for a specific size for your project. Right next to this is the looking glass, which is our search function. Here you can search for the location that you want to present on your map, for example, Eindhoven or Europe, and you will be taken there automatically. If you want to change your view a little bit, just zoom in and drag your mouse around until you're happy with what is in your view box. In case you want to change your map project, you can see right here it says Untitled. You can double click and then give your mapping projects a name. For example, we will call this Example Map. Now let's go over the bottom bar. This is where you can lock your view, making sure that you will not remove where your canvas is. You can zoom in or out, change the tilt and the rotation, or put custom coordinates in case you want to go to a specific location. When we go to the right side of the bottom bar, you have to fit the screen. When you click this button, basically your map will become closer to you without changing your zoom levels. This is perfect in case you want to work on some nitty gritty details, and by clicking it again, it will be disabled. Then right next to that is the grid. If you click on this, the grid that you see will not appear on your export. This is just for your editing mode so that you can see what is placed where on your map. The safe space, make sure that labels can be removed from the top, the left, the right, or the bottom of your map, making the middle stand out more. And on the right to that is our customer support chat where we are always happy to help in case you have any issues during your mapping project. Now that we've got the basics covered, let's create our map. For this example, I want to create a map of the location of Eindhoven, where Map Creator's headquarters is located. We're going to navigate to the top left where we see the little line and click on the drop down arrow right next to it. Because instead of a line, for this we want to add an area. When you click on it, you can select either a single or a grouped area. Grouped areas refer to countries, counties, cities, districts, you name it, we most likely have it. After the area is added on my map, I can click on it once to open the styling menu. Here you can change the fill, the transparency, the stroke, or even add a pattern instead of a solid color. Now, to highlight the location of our headquarters even more, I am going to close up the areas menu and instead open the icon menu right on top of it. Here you can either navigate your different icon sets, search for a specific icon, or scroll down in your set to find what you are looking for. An icon button can be placed on your map by clicking down once or by clicking and dragging it into position where you want it to be. After adding your icon to the map, the styling menu will automatically appear. Here you can change the color, the size, and the rotation, and you can also turn on collision detection to avoid that there's any overlap with the base map labels and the icon that you just placed. To click lock position, you will put your icon always in that position of your screen, for example, the bottom right, or if you want something always in the middle. Now, to better clarify what this icon is referencing, we can add a label. You can type your own text here and then change the text color or the outline color. When we go to font settings, you can also change the font family, the font style, and even the size. Let's make it a bit smaller so that it's not so overwhelming on our map. And when we move it just a little bit, you can see the collision detection doing its magic and the Eindhoven label is visible again. In case you want your icon to be on a specific location, you can go to the top right to the location tab and type either your address or your coordinates right here for the icon to be placed there. 
as you can see, the area that we added is now below any map labels, but on top of the roads. In case this is something you want to change, we are going to navigate to the map layers. This was previously known as the elements list. You can find this on the top left and you can open it by clicking on it once. Here you can see that our base map is now made out of three different sections. You have your custom elements, being anything that you added on the map. Your overlays, which we haven't added on this specific map, but let's still have a look at where these can be found. If you go one tap above layers, you can find our live or regular data layers. You can either scroll through them or use the search bar if you are looking for something specific. And then we have our base map layers right here. When you open the base map layers, you can see that these are divided into five very simple categories, making it easy to find whatever you are looking for. When we click on custom elements, we can see the icon and the shape that we added. Now, if you go to the side and you see the three dots, by clicking on it, you can either move something up or down. So we can make the roads, for example, be on top of our shape or the labels below it. In case you want to hide something from the base map, for example, certain roads or certain labels, simply open the base map layers again and then use the little eye to hide or show certain elements. Now let's add a line to our project. We're gonna navigate to the top left to open the line tool and there's two ways that a line can be added. Either you search for the locations right here in the search bar or you manually click on your map. When manually clicking, double click on the last point for your line to come to an end. The start and end point will automatically be marked right here alongside their coordinates. Now let's navigate to the styling menu. Here you can put your line color, the transparency, the line type, the width, and there's also a function for rounded corners. However, for rounded corners, you need more than just a straight line. You can quite easily manipulate your line by clicking on it and dragging extra anchor points to create some sort of curve. Now, if we activate the rounded corners, you can see that there's a very nice flow. Another nice thing is that you can also see the distance of your line right here. Now, let's remove this line and have a look at something different where we will add a polygon. Let's navigate right back to the top left, but instead of clicking on the line, we will click on the drop down next to it. From this selection, we can pick the polygon to add. Your polygon will be created by clicking down on your map. When you double click on the last anchor point, your shape will be finalized and the styling menu will automatically appear. As you can see here, your surface area is displayed in my case in square kilometers, but this is all depending on your preferences and could also be in miles. Here you can add your fill color, transparency, outline color and width and add a pattern. If you click on the toggle for rounded corners, you can see that this is automatically activated and it can be disabled simply by clicking on it again. And that's it! Now we are ready to export our project. When we go to export, there's a few different options that you can decide from. So you can pick a PNG or a JPEG in which you can set the DPI, you can pick a PDF for print or our true vector SVG for digital publications. When you go for a SVG, PNG or JPEG, you can decide whether you want to go for an embed link or if you want to export the file by fully downloading it onto your device. Hopefully this was helpful for you in getting to know the Map Creator Next and we can't wait to see all of the amazing projects that you will create. Thank you for watching.